Um, and let's make use of the fact that um, in the CE region nowadays we have these open borders and can actually like bring people together before the main hackathon um, to uh, get excited about the uh, event, uh, learn more about the technical spaces of our movement and then send um, one or two representatives from each uh, community to Vienna for the main event. So um, I started um, going around and spreading that idea one and a half years before we actually hosted the hackathon. A lot of people made fun of me because I was very German starting planning very early on. But um, I think um, uh, it, it was a good idea because it gave people time to think about like, oh, is that something I want to do? Do I want to do tech community building? Um, do I want to work on certain projects with my community in my country? And in the end, um, we had um, not only one, not two, not three, four um, uh, pre-hackathon events um, in the CE region coming closer from, uh, from Greece towards Vienna over the months um, leading up to the hackathon in May. Uh, I didn't count ourselves. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, exactly. So, we, we had all these three events with very different um, goals and, um, and um, ways how it was set up. So, that's why I invited um, one uh, representative of each of these uh, communities and um, hackathon organizing teams to uh, present to you very quickly what they wanted to achieve, how they achieved it, what were some challenges and what worked out well. Um, I start with what um, we did in, in Austria. We had two pre-events, um, one for um, all genders and one um, uh, specially designed for um, female and non-binary coders, um, just to give them a safe space uh, to learn about a couple of things and to find out whether this is really um, the type of uh, coding and type of environment and community they want to be um, in, um, uh, because it showed that women um, and non-binary people um, have a, a lower threshold of actually um, learning and uh, trying out themselves and, and building confidence when they learn from each other from peer to peer. Um, and uh, to build that safe space before the hackathon, we decided to have a particular um, event for them. That was actually also inspired, um, that's why I'm happy she's here, from Catherine, who um, put on a fabricated task um, uh, for the hackathon saying, oh, I found this interesting article, how tech events become uh, more, um, more welcoming for, for women. Um, and that was like one, one of the starting points, how we started um, about thinking how the hackathon can be a more welcoming event in general. And that was just one of of a lot of things we did around the main event, but the pre-event was certainly very, um, a very good starting point because we, we realized that, um, uh, that interestingly, the uh, retention rate from the uh, coding workshop for female and non-binary was way higher than from the mixed group. And I could, we could already sense that on these days, like one was on Saturday, the other one on Sunday, like on two days after another, and the, the atmosphere in those events was very, very different. Like. Um, the, the, the um, a workshop for women was way more social. People started um, networking very early on. And you could see that at the main event too, like these uh, women came uh, in, in groups and they found each other and were not overwhelmed by being thrown into an event with 200 strangers. They already had some familiar faces and you could see them hanging out in, in breaks together and, and showing each other things and helping each other. And I found it really beautiful that it worked that even after just like one afternoon together a couple of weeks before that, um, they already had their little peer networks within that um, uh, major event um, and they kept in touch in between too. So that's why I would strongly recommend if um, community building is your goal for, for tech events um, and you also want to um, uh, try to get a more diverse group of coders, this is a good thing to, um, to start off to at, the at least at the beginning um, create some safe spaces for different groups. Of course in the long run you want to you know, lead them together and um, have them collaborate um, in, in, in bigger and uh, diverse groups, but um, to get to know each other and to um, find out whether coding is your thing, like having smaller, safer spaces is um, definitely something we would um, recommend. Um, what we also realized that the, um, the location of, of the um, pre-hackathons that we chose had a major impact um, on, on the atmosphere and the success of the event. For the uh, female and non-binary workshop, we rented out a whole space that we only had for ourselves. The other one we did in a hack space in Vienna, where um, also um, hackers that were not part of our event could come and go because it's their community space, but some of them were really disruptive. 
um, and also um, creating some unsafe spaces for some of the female participants there very quickly. So, and that got out of hand, like not in a very dramatic way, but like in very uh, lo in a lot of small ways. We saw like it's not a good thing to have such an event in um, an event space that you don't fully control yourself. If if you want to create a safe space, rent out something or do it in your own offices. Um, if you have people there that you can't control, they're not part of your event, and also did not sign sign up to your policies, um, that can become a problem. Um, yeah. Otherwise, um, what we also learned is that um, for the other goal to prepare um, these volunteers for the main event in terms of like having them install media wiki, getting um, a first impression of how Fabricator works and all these things, um, uh, the feedback from many of the participants was that they uh, would have loved to have like um, a, um, a laundry list beforehand, how they can prepare, especially the more advanced coders wanted to know like how much... Um, room they need um, on, on their laptops to install things um, and um, to, to familiarize themselves beforehand and can come with concrete questions and not want to start from scratch right at the event. We didn't do that. That's something that I would recommend to others. Um, putting on your event page a couple of things, what um, exactly will happen, um, what people will do, what they need, so that they, if they want, they can prepare themselves and familiarize themselves with some of the requirements. So that was that. And now I hand over to Marius and uh, what he learned in Greece. So, hi, I'm Marius again. <laughs> uh, so, from the Greek experience, I think it was a great timing of what happened uh, with uh, Claudia because this was coming in my mind to, to have a hackathon in Greece many years ago. I have participated in many hackathons uh, were organized by WMF and uh, the idea of create of d doing something in Greece was emerging, and many people were asking that what else we can do except of editons and to get more people involved. And so we 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 made a, a similar approach with Claudia. We we said that well, okay, we have to work with uh, with students. We have to focus to students in the universities, informatics, and we also have to find uh, groups like fem all female groups in order to, to work in, in this direction too. And so what we did is we went to Thessaloniki, which is the second uh, largest city, and we had some connections with the university. And we contacted uh, groups at the university. One is open, the only Open Knowledge Foundation, and the other is CSAR, which is a um, female-focused uh, IT group. And we decided to work together in that. Uh, it was a really good experience because we already had contact with them and it was a good experience in order to make them uh, to make our ties uh, stronger with them and so what the, the, we faced some problems in the beginning in order to make this uh, happen because we had no experience of what we expected from people and how people were really familiar with uh, wiki code uh, media wiki API etc etc and in the beginning we had the idea to use the WMF wish list, which is, uh, so we aimed too high, I think. And we had no experience of how to make this more educational. We, we, uh, uh, in Greece we had the luck to have one of the uh, WMF staff, uh, Ariel Glenn, who is a programmer for the, for the institute. So we had all the good material to work with. And so what we did is that we found a, a very nice place uh, or that was given to us by the University of Thessaloniki and we organized an event, a single event one day that contained two parts okay, maybe uh, two parts in the hackathon play uh, part one for females and one for males and also we, we also combined that with, uh, with talks about media wiki fabricator etc etc in order to, to educate people about these things um, we did a lot of talks uh, about, uh, we also worked about auto wiki browser, it's uh, one of the tools I implement in open source because we want to combine uh, Wikipedia with open source in general, uh, auto wiki browser is also uh, something that is a browser for Wikipedia anyway and so we had people working in media wiki, Python Wikipedia, mobile, uh, auto wiki browser and for rookies we decided to that if they can't fix any bugs, they can work on documentation. 
Uh, they work, we explain what the fabricator is, and we, we show them the tools, and they work on documentation. Uh, we had some, we, have, we had uh, bugs fixed during the event. Uh, it, it was an all-time event, uh, from, uh, all day event from the morning to the afternoon. And what do we learn from that? First of all, we learned that in, uh, for rookies to use the tools, it was a, a very difficult procedure. And we have to find ways to, to explain and give these things in a, in a, in a simpler way. In a, and this is a problem we are going to face because, uh, in the future because we want to repeat the event. Everybody was really enthusiastic by, from, from this event. Uh, we even gained members in the user group from this event. We have two new members after the event. Two people uh, came to us, not by, via editing, but via programming. And this was a real gain for us. And we have also two more female editors that want to now to enter the group that they were connected via c -Sharp. So probably the, 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 the user group will have four new members in, after six months after the event, which is a, a, a great number. Imagine we are like ten people active here. And the, the, the other thing is that after that, these organizations really contact us and they said, okay, we did that, that last year, let's do it again. And we are doing this uh, in October 7th. We are organizing a, a new event, uh, again with the same organizations. Uh, and, and the universities are really interested in uh, uh, making a better contact with uh, WMF and with us in order to make these uh, hacking events. Uh, so, on the, log on the logistics, last year we had 150 attendees, which is, I think it's a great number. I don't know, compared to my country, it's a good number. And we had 85, 80, 85 participants in, in the hackathon because we had also many people attending but not really when, uh, willing to contribute, they had no laptops. Uh, but 85 of them came, in, uh, 85 participants came in order to, to contribute. And the other important thing is that the cost was zero, in fact. Uh, apart from uh, some uh, things that we had to, for, for, for transportation, uh, the venue, everything was covered by, by institutions. Uh, so so it, it was an event. We didn't need any help from WMF for that uh, because the people really wanted to know what WMF is about and what they do about what programming, etc., etc. And this shows that there's also many people out, outside there that they want to contribute to the movement, but not only by editing, but in other ways. That's the other thing. Okay. You continue with Claudia. Andre? Yeah. <laughs> so it's me again. Um, now I'm here as Andre because he unfortunately couldn't um, attend this conference, but uh, nicely enough he gave us some input um, about what they did in Romania. Because um, he also um, did, did a, a great event. I, I know it was challenging for him for, for a couple of reasons, but um, he too brought um, uh, a new community member to the Vienna Hackathon after that. Um, they too work together with um, long-term university partners um, uh, and made it uh, more than one event, like it were, were three consecutive events throughout the whole semester um, at that university course. Um, and um, they actually uh, had a pretty broad um, set of things that they covered um, in, in these three hackathons from um, upload wizard, which is still not reviewed. I think that's um, a little secret message in here in case anybody <laughs> <laughs> wants to nudge some people afterwards. Um, and um, MediaWiki Core and PWikiBot. Um, and what, what I find is really great that nobody left um, in the end without having at least one patch submitted. So uh, because that's also something we learned, ha like every participant should have like a little uh, success story um, to motivate them to actually continue uh, volunteering afterwards. If you really have the feeling that you accomplished something, um, that's the best motivation you can get. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, what, what did they learn? Um, promotion is very important to get people um, into, your, into your events in first place. Um, Media Wiki background setup is a pain, um, so they would probably go for some other virtual machines that work more smoothly in future. Um, and the partners' activities um, were probably not um, as they um, expected or hoped for. I guess that refers to the university, and I'm not entirely sure, but um, probably um, they felt a bit left, left alone in, towards the end of the journey. Okay, 
Um, so next to Budapest. Oh. Um, next to Budapest. Okay. Um, so after we had a discussion last year in the CE meeting with Claudia, we decided that we will make a pre hackathon uh, event in, in Budapest. And the first question was that how a hackathon look like? I, as an organizer, I never attended a uh, hackathon. Uh, I'm not a programmer, so let's organize a hackathon. Um, and and uh, and before before we started to organize the hackathon, we had to uh, set up some questions. How should it look like? The first question was that who would like to invite? Who's the target group? Uh, members of the local uh, Wikimedia project with programming interest. It would be the best option because Wikimedia and programmers, uh, people from outside the Wikimedia movement with with programming. Uh, knowledge and with the uh, cultural uh, free culture interest, or members of the local Wikimedia project, project without any programming skills, but they are interested in this topic, so we can learn programming. Or people from free culture uh, movement uh, without programming uh, knowledge. Um, and what would be the topic which we would like to cover on the on the on the pre hackathon? Uh, and there was a long list of options which we could cover or could be uh, topic, media, wiki extensions, wikimedia, app, semantic web, uh, maps, geoinformatics, mobile apps, data visual visualization, ports, tools, and so on. And, uh, and, uh, and the next question was that how, what, which requirements should, we, should the venue fulfill? Uh, which size, uh, which kind of Wi-Fi connection, wireless connection we need. Uh, do we need laptops and computers for the particip participants or should we require that they really should bring uh, laptops with them? Uh, we need projectors, tables, electricity plugs. It's, you know, we know that we need a lot of them for, for, for programmers or in a hackathon. And do we need catering? Uh, this was a long time discussion. Um, when when should it when should it be? And uh, I lost something with my notes. Um, I really lost. And okay. And uh, after after this uh, planning process, the question was that how can we decide? Because. The, most, most of the, these questions we can answer only if we know who will attend on the conference or, or on the hackathon. Uh, we, uh, who, who will be educators? Uh, who, who should we invite uh, to to help help us? And uh, after after that, we started the email and Wikimedia, Wikimedia campaign uh, to to sur make a survey that who would like to attend from the hung from the Hungarian Wikimedia. Hungarian language projects, and uh, after this, this uh, email and Wikimedia in Wikimedia internal uh, survey, it was very disappointing because we we sent uh, emails and personal uh, messages and so on for everybody who was ever in the last ten years active in programming on 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 Wikipedia, and uh, and. Uh, we received a lot of answers. Most of them was that sorry, I cannot come or I don't want or um, leave another country and other continent. And uh, and uh, one answer received we received that maybe we will, I will participate. So this is not enough for a pre hackathon. So we started with the online survey, external camp uh, survey, where we invited a lot of partners, uh, open open movement. Uh, uh, open so free free so software developers, uh, open street map community, and so on. Everybody who could connect in Hungary, and we 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 find a contact, and we contacted them and invited them for a survey that uh, uh, would they be part participate, and uh, what their, is their background and interest. And there were several questions in the in the survey. That, that we are, we are, uh, we will know that who will, who, who what can we ex accept f 
from from them if, if they will arrive or what they do they accept from us when they arrive and uh, and the it was also a question that that should it be a more an in, uh, the educational type of of event event where where we where we present something and educate them or more like a real hackathon that programmer arrive please take a seat start programming thank you in the evening we give some food for you or I don't know so and and we decided at the end we, we will make a combined combined uh, solution so at the beginning there will be an education and introduction part and then after that there there, there will be a discussion and uh, and uh, and uh, and programming section of the of the of the pre hackathon the question was also that how long is this hackathon what is the best time frame it can be few hours or can start from the early morning and takes until midnight or 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 a multiple even uh, uh, multiple day even and we decided in this time that that this will be a long day event which starts in the morning and takes until late uh, evening but but it will be a one day uh, occasion that, uh, event and uh, and in the in the pre hackathon we had finally three uh, three main topics. Uh, first was mainly with the Wikimedia infra infrastructure, media wiki, uh, media wiki, Wikimedia APIs, and so on. And uh, and it's, it was a quite overview, quite bright, broad overview of the of the Wikimedia uh, technical infrastructure. The second topic was Wikidata, Wikidata SparkQL um, queries and PyWikiBot. And the third topics was maps and, and Wikimedia and connection and uh, and uh, Wikidata and maps and so on, uh, because a large part of the participants came from the OpenStreetMap community, Hungarian OpenStreetMap community. And uh, and what did we learn from the event after we did that? That I think it was quite useful that we we spent quite a long time thinking on it how could it work because because finally it was something which is acceptable result uh, it could be much worse i think uh, if we just start to s organize uh, announce that anybody can come and then few people are there and they don't receive that they accept expect um, but but it was a disappointing experience that the local tech community is very very weak and uh, the few people who is still active in this in, in the community don't want this hackathon offline and and personal uh, events they don't want to participate in in this form and uh, and uh, one very important experience was that um, we had a registration form and uh, more than more than 30 people uh, answered that and will be surely there and very much very much interested and uh, finally 15 people show up so so I organized everything and and planned the food and catering and for for more than 30 people and then at the end we were okay what should we do with all this hmm? no, no, so uh, maybe later I will tell you how we solve this in Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, schedule is very important uh, because the, the the first part was uh, education and presentations, and uh, and it took very very long. It was two or three hours longer than we planned originally, and at the end, uh, finally, the real hackathon programming was quite a short time. It was more like discussion and. And, and a lot of interesting topics we discussed, but not really coding was the final result. And uh, and the final word that uh, it is really effective if we if we make it time to time because we have now some some interested participant outside who would like to who who are un interested in this in in, the, in 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 participating in the movement or the, in the Wikimedia Tech community. But if we if we don't uh, repeat this action that they we will lose them, but af after time we will we will we will lose their attention or lost them. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So we are, we are <coughs>
give just, just one more very brief comment. So we actually uh, solve this problem that people uh, fill the form and then won't come by very simple thing. We just require a very small fee uh, for attending. Mm. Uh, not completely connected with the cost of the, of the conference, but then if someone will pay let's say in our case 50 slots, but you can tailor this amount of money to your situation, so then it's much more higher probability that they will come and you will know roughly how many people will come and not, not wasting money for, for 40 people when you have only 15. I mean, uh, this, to, to, to give you an idea, the 50 slot the, uh, participation fee that we require from uh, the attendees for, let's say, two or three days conference, is half what you would pay for a night at a low-level three-star hotel, I would say. Okay. So, so it's, it's a meaningful amount of money, like 12 euros. It's, it's, it's not a large barrier, but it's something that you have to pay. And, and, and that sort of guarantees high turnover. Okay, now we have John talking about the hackathon in Prague. Hi, I'm Jan from Wikimedia Czech Republic, and I'd like to say you something about how we did a pre-hackathon in Prague. I wasn't the main organizer, I was just a person who take care about uh, all of the problems which were connected with the traveling people and with the staff, but not with the technical things. So, how we did it. Uh, main organizer was uh, Wojciech Dostal, the president of Wikimedia Czech Republic. The funny thing is that he never coded. He's a not a tech guy, he's just a person who has an idea to do a pre-hackathon and to improve the Commons app. So, uh, we need someone who will uh, be the tech person. So we asked for help uh, Josephine Linz, which uh, lives in uh, New Zealand and Australia at the moment. And uh, she helps uh, with the Commons app, she has an IG grant for that. And uh, so she was the main organizer as a tech person. So, uh, what we decided to do as a pre hackathon, we don't focus on many topics, we focus just for one topic. The topic you can see in the bottom right corner is the Wikimedia Commons app, it's developed by volunteers. And uh, we decided to bring all of these volunteers together, to get to know each other, to work together, to help them to solve the problems together, and uh, as well to do some... Uh, team building, let's call it in this way, between them to do this team stronger. So we have uh, 12 attendants around the globe. We have uh, people from uh, uh, Turkey, from uh, New Zealand, uh, from India, So it, and uh, then a lot of people from Europe who attended and people from Czech Republic as well. The thing that was connecting everyone was the Wikimedia Commons app. Uh, so, uh, how we find these people, we simply go through the, through the GitHub and find all of the contributors and ask them if they want to participate in a real live event and code in real life. We were really surprised that mostly everyone tell, yeah, we want to we wanna join you in a real life in Prague and do the hacking for uh, four days together. So, we have a 12 participants on a, on a spot. Some people were attending remote and it really boosts uh, boost the team. Uh, what, we were, what we did in Prague, uh, the main goal was uh, improving the Commons app so the programmers went through uh, issues on a GitHub and uh, they were doing bug fixing that it's really boring stuff and no one wants to do this. But when you have uh, people around you who helps you, it was a uh, boost in uh, the programmers to do that. Then we did a two-step verification maps of unphotograph places and uh, this was just the beginning. And the whole team was uh, moved to Vienna in a few days and uh, continue on their work at a Vienna hackathon. Uh, another thing that we were done, we have a wonderful photographer there, so he did a promotional materials, he did a video about the hackathon, he did a, the poster, with which poster we were presenting our work or work of programmers in a hackathon in Vienna. Okay, what uh, did we learn? 
that uh, we learned that the idea to get a team together is wonderful and that it really helps. It was our idea, we did it and it was working. So we are happy that uh, we have this knowledge. Then we, did, uh, we uh, learned how to do a small international events. Uh, and the uh, most problems appears on the first day. So on the first day I was sitting in, uh, in a villa where the people were uh, arriving and uh, one person missed his flight, the second one lost the luggage, first one was robbed uh, in a plane. So we, we learned how to solve all of these small problems which are doing the, the great event. Then we learned uh, that the home atmosphere helps. We don't want to uh, do the event in uh, some big hotel. We rented a villa for uh, an Airbnb. There was a more flat, so everyone was staying in another flat, but it was a one villa. So uh, when someone was coded at nine and want to ask someone for something, he just went to the living room and uh, he was sitting there and coding as well. So everyone was in a really close touch with each other. Then uh, we learned that for venue, we don't need a, some, uh, for a small venue, the office is enough. Everyone was coding in our office. We rented uh, one more room uh, from uh, the hub space where we are, where we have an office, and we did everything there. And uh, also, we learned that we need uh, to do uh, events for for everyone, so sightseeing and uh, doing uh, doing things together, go to uh, lunch together, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And uh, as well, we learned that uh, food and everything have to be in one place. to so don't waste the time with moving and stuff like that. So the the thing what I want to say is that uh, I think that these kind of a meetings for uh, in boosting and improving the team are really good and uh, we have a good experience with uh, that in Prague. And there was a small commercial for the app, so <laughs> this is how it has to look in your phone. When you have a not open button, but the install button there in a, in a Google Play, it's bad. You have to download the app and have an open button there. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. So yeah, thanks again everybody. That was one of the most lovely parts of hosting that hackathon, to have that international collaboration and the CE region is just so great to do these things. So um, if people get interested and excited about um, tech community building, because I think all of our communities can use more people that are tech savvy that support our uh, projects, um, we also um, are lucky enough to have Rachel here from, um, from the Wikimedia Foundation, and her job is to um, support communities with um, small and big tech events, and um, I invited her to uh, present to you what they offer um, as support and help, um, So and then connect to her afterwards in case you're interested to do something similar. Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, like Claudia said, I work for the Wikimedia Foundation as the events program manager, but I'm here at this conference uh, paying for myself as a volunteer. Um, here in this photo, we have the technical collaboration team at the Wikimedia Foundation. In this photo, I think it's 11 people from nine countries, so we're quite a diverse team, uh, and our job is basically collaborating technically around the world. So um, I think I have maybe three minutes, so I'm not going to read in detail through everything and make sure Claudia gets the last word. But um, not take your time. As as the technical collaboration team. Um, there are three of us on a sub-team called the Developer Relations Team, so it's quite a small group of people. Um, but what we're trying to do as a team, and we're still growing and learning and becoming better, of course, um, but we're supporting volunteer developers in every way that we can, connecting de developers throughout the world and the Wikimedia movement together, uh, and onboarding new developers. So just like with editing, our technical communities can also become stagnant and not grow. And so we're trying to look at this as a global issue and figure out how we can help as the foundation, how we can help people like Claudia and people like everyone who organized these um, pre-hackathons. Um, and we have a lot of projects that we're working on coming soon, like um, multilingual technical documentation. Right now it's hard if you don't speak English to um, work in the technical communities within Wikimedia. Um, also, just like at hackathons where there's a project that's a featured project and it has a mentor, uh, this is something that a lot of universities and pre-hackathons and small events have been asking us for, just a list of tasks that we can do. So we're, we're putting together 
a list of projects with mentors where you can work um, in person or online throughout the year. And just like with editors, again, we're, we're starting to do more research about uh, who are the volunteer developers, why are they here, and what can we do to help them more, I and mean, we just need this information to know what we can do to help. Um, and then, of course, our team organizes events um, throughout the year, multiple events. Um, and so um, I just want to say that I'm here to talk to anybody about any of these things, if you have questions or ideas for your own community. Um, because our team just wants to reach out and help as many communities as with, through Wikimedia as possible. But if you're organizing an event, um, we can help connect you with Wikimedia Foundation developers. We have a lot of event documentation. We can add your lessons learned to our event documentation. Uh, we can just give you advice, very informal, like a quick Google Hangout advice about your um, event plan and what you might want to think about improving if you want that fabricator trainings, um, and we can connect your local developers that you already have to international programs and international communities. Um, and then um, in case you're very motivated, we can even organize a larger event together like the one Wikimedia Austria did. Um, there's a whole process for application to that. Um, and then if you're looking to do a rapid grant for your small um, local event, just, again, informally, we can help look through that um, proposal that you have and, and your submission. So uh, if you have, if you want to talk about any of this, I'm here and talk to now. So back to Claudia. So I don't have anything more to say, but um, if there are <laughs> questions, um, then we're happy to answer questions for a couple of minutes. We got five minutes more because we started later. <laughs> Q&A. I just... Great presentation. It's a really, really great idea to do this uh, free hackathon. I really like this. I just have a cur question out of curiosity. Have you made a statistic how many attendance, attendance of the free hackathons were then on your hackathon in Vienna? Do you have a, a, like a number? Um, it was two from every community except from Romania. Prague. That was only one person. And Prague is a bit um, like different because that was just before the main hackathon and all of them came so they also like a lot of them went through our visa process they flew into Vienna went to Prague hang out there come back to Vienna so they were coding for a week basically so that was a bit of a different um, event but um, for all others because we could only offer like the idea was also to offer as prizes for like the, the most accomplished um, uh, participants to attend the main event in Vienna and um, we could like our budget only allowed for one or two per community to come so yeah. From yeah. yeah. From from Hungary, five five people attended. Uh, three of us received scholarship for it, and two or not. Ah, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it is a bit complicated, but um, we had somebody from every um, community there. A bit of yeah. And uh, I want to add, uh, I'm from Ukraine, and uh, just we also organized. The microphone. It's on. You just, just close it. Just close it. Okay. Uh, and uh, we also organized. Uh, maybe without microphone, but <laughs> <laughs> we also organized a hackathon in Ukraine before Vienna hackathon, and uh, we had a number of participants. Uh, I will speak just uh, as a participant, not, not like organizer, because there is no organizers here. And uh, we uh, also had. Uh, uh, covered some uh, topic uh, as an important thing that uh, it was invited uh, p people who are technically uh, know something and uh, who are uh, absolutely like me don't know te technical things but it was uh, useful for bo uh, for boss uh, and uh, uh, we managed uh, to cover such topics like uh, Wikidata, SQL, Sparkle, uh, PyWiki, yeah. uh, Java, something like this. And uh, also, I think it's an important thing that organizers, after several months, uh, they uh, uh, ask for a feed feedback. But not uh, after the hackathon, but after uh, several months of the hackathon. What, what, uh, what are you doing? Uh, so uh, it was it was useful just like this. Yeah, yes, thanks for that. And um, I actually also agree with Tamash. Um, if you want, really want, like, if community building is the um, the goal, you have to have a, like more events after that. So we had the main uh, hackathon event, but now we're also in autumn having uh, more events um, that are tailored to what we saw uh, got people interested, which is mainly wiki data for for a lot of people because it's just a bit easier to get started there than do a media wiki um, coding. That, that that's not so easy. 
Um, but definitely, like you, you need to um, keep in touch with them um, and try to improve also your offer and services and event formats um, if you want to keep them engaged in the long run. Okay. More Anyone questions? Else? Just a. You need a microphone. Just a random comment of a very surprised person that uh, those pre hackathons were organized basically in neighboring countries by very by communities that might seem very similar to each other. And looking at my notes, I see a lot of diversity in terms of the range, the number of topics from one to many, the tools. I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised then. Uh, yeah, in, in, a, in a very positive way. And uh, I, I hope that it all panned out uh, to, 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 to be a successful combination for the main hackathon. Definitely did. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. the beauty of the CE region. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had uh, also to participate from Belarus, and he told me after the microphone like this. Uh, the participant from Belarus, Mikhail, he is, what, is this room, but uh, and uh, he uh, also just after Wikimania, he uh, say, oh, well, why don't you organize uh, Wikihackathon in Ukraine? So maybe also some people from Belarus, but only he uh, came. But it was uh, good to just uh, cooperation. But but as uh, communities and organizations, I think um, the tech community building is still something that all of us can improve on. Like uh, coming back to what we talked about yesterday, that edits are not necessarily the only way to contribute. And I think one of the groups that in many communities. Um, could uh, get more and deserve more attention are um, the, the, the people that do the, the tech technical part of our project. So yeah. I mean, just want to highlight the forty percent female attendance of the hackathon in Thessaloniki. This is really really great. I think you, you rarely and even non tech events, non tech media events, you don't have such a high attendance of female persons. So congratulations, yeah. Margaret. Yeah. I agree with that same situation. I forget, we don't have a female at all. <laughs> we have a total gender gap. Okay, I think now we're definitely over time, so okay. there are no urgent questions, we should probably... Yeah, you can talk later.